When it comes to Android camera apps, open camera is one of the leading options. And in this video, we're gonna step through a complete open camera app tutorial to show you exactly how to use it. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video where we help you amplify your business and brand with video. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. Let's jump into it. Open Camera is a popular choice when it comes to camera apps on Android. It unlocks some really powerful functionality, but there's a lot of options in there and it can definitely get overwhelming. But don't worry, because we're about to do a step-by-step -step walkthrough to show you all the settings that you need and exactly how to get some awesome results. And once we're done, I'll also share with you our fast track checklist to help you maximize your results when you're filming on any smartphone. It includes links to the simple gear that we recommend and also a ton of simple tips that you can implement right now to level up your smartphone video game. And on that note, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. What's your number one tip for boosting video quality on your phone? Let us know and don't miss out on what others are sharing down there as well. Okay, so this is what you'll see when you first open up Open Camera. We've got your menu bar across the top here, which has your exposure lock. This will lock your exposure. The next one across here will let you adjust your exposure. The next one across here is where you can dial in the look and feel of your shot. We will jump into this in a minute. You've got your settings button. You can switch and rotate your camera around here. We've got it currently set on video mode. That is your record button. And we can switch to photo mode pressing this one here. This camera app does work for photos as well as videos. And down the bottom here, you've got your zoom slider to zoom in and out. Now I just wanna stress here that on some Android devices, you won't have all of these features. It will really come down to the device that you are using and what's supported by that device and what's supported by this app with your specific device. So if you're missing any features or some of these things don't show up for you, it's likely due to this app not being supported by your device. But in most cases, you'll find you should have access to all of these things. So the first thing you wanna do is to set up the app. So you come up here to settings. And once again, I just wanna say that we're not gonna run through every setting in here. There are way too many of them. I'm just gonna show you the important ones that you need to jump straight into to get set up for best results. And then at a later time, you can come back through and go through them and see if there's anything else that might help you with the type of videos you're creating. So we're gonna go down here straight away to video settings. And in here, the first thing you wanna set is your video resolution. So we can see here, we've got video resolution, 4K Ultra HD is set. I'm using a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, so it does have a 4K camera. So you wanna select the resolution that you wanna shoot at here first. You can see there's a lot of options, a lot more than the built-in camera app on your phone. We're gonna leave this here at 4K. I'll hit cancel. Then you can choose the format of the video, the next one down here. Now what I suggest you do is leave this set here as default or choose MPEG-4, H.264. In most cases, unless you specifically need one of these other formats, I'd say you could pretty much leave this as default. The video bitrate is the next one here that you'll wanna lock down, the next one you wanna set. So this one here is the quality of the recording. So we've set the actual size. 4K, 1080. Now this is the actual quality of the recording at that size. So the way it works is the lower the number, the lower the quality of the recording, the higher the number, the higher quality of the recording. Now you can see here, you can go up to 200 megabits per second with this app and with this device, which is crazy high. That's higher than a lot of professional level cameras. So there definitely is a point here of diminishing returns. Will you notice the difference between 50 megabits per second and 100 megabits per second, whereas your file sizes are going to be twice as big? big. In most cases, I'd say probably unlikely. So what I'd recommend for most people is they're setting their camera record quality here, probably around the 50 megabit per second, if you're after really high quality video without being ridiculous file size. Now, if you are someone who wants that absolute best quality recording, then just know in here that you can go right up to 200 megabits per second if you need to. Personally, I don't think I'd ever actually go above 100 megabits per second on a smartphone camera, at least at this point. So we're gonna leave it at 50 and I'll go cancel. The next one is your video frame rate. So this is the number of frames or think of them as photos per second to make up the motion in your video. Now, if you're after that cinematic film look, a lot of people will be telling you to shoot at 24 frames per second. The standard frame rate for filming on your smartphones is actually around 30. So it will give you a different look and feel for the videos that you're creating. 
Now, as you go above 30 and into 60 and above that, this is where you're entering slow motion territory. So again, this is going to be device dependent as to how high you can actually go here. You can see here, this phone supports 240 frames per second. So that's pretty decent for slow motion on a smartphone. So unless you're specifically after slow motion, you can come back down here and select your frame rate. I'm just gonna leave this as the default, which is 30 frames per second. That's a good idea while you're going through the settings here to check this one here, maximum duration of video. This is where you wanna make sure it's set to unlimited, otherwise your recording will stop at whatever time is selected here. So if you are gonna be recording and you've got to set to stop recording after one minute, then that could be pretty frustrating. So it's always a good idea to come in here and check that you have this set to unlimited. And likewise with the maximum file size of the video, it's a good idea to check that one as well. Just make sure that it's set to device default. So that way it's not gonna switch off again while you're recording. You also wanna double check that you've got audio recording enabled. Unless you wanna record a video without audio, then I would suggest that you leave this one on. Otherwise you'll have no sound. And following on from that, you'll also wanna make sure that you've got your microphone selected. So select this one here, audio source. Now, if you're just using the built-in microphone on your smartphone, then you can leave this here as camcorder. That's using the built-in one. If you are plugging in a microphone, then you will need to manually select here external microphone if present so that it will utilize that one over the internal microphone. So we'll leave that one there, external microphone. Okay, we'll go back up to the top here. We're back out of this one. So that's video settings. Then we'll come down here and if this is supported by your device, use camera two API. I'd strongly recommend that you turn this one on. This is going to give you, it says here, extra features such as manual modes for exposure, focus, white balance, along with raw, if it's supported by your device. So I recommend that you turn this one on if you've got this option, restart the app, and that's gonna give you access to a lot more of these more advanced controls. Now, if we come up here to on-screen GUI, this is where we can customize up how the app looks. And we can add extra icons and tools and those sorts of things to the dashboard layout or to the main screen layout. So if we come down here to show auto white balance lock icon, this is one that I would recommend that you turn on. But obviously, feel free to go through and customize this up for you. So we'll back out of this now. We'll go back to our main camera screen. You can see we've now got an extra button up here for locking down the white balance, which we're gonna to get to in a second. Okay, so we've gone through, we've set up our settings, we've set our recording quality, recording bit rate, and our frame rate. Next up is to lock down our actual shot and get everything looking the way that we want. Now, if you're someone who likes to shoot in full auto mode, you can just press the record button, start recording, but things are going to automatically adjust and change while you're recording. Like if I bring my hand in here now, you can see the shot got brighter and then darker. So in order to take that automatic control away from our phone and lock everything down so that nothing changes in our shoot, that's when we wanna lock down our exposure. And also during these adjustments that have been made, the color temperature can also change. And that's why it's important to lock down the white balance as well. So in order to adjust the exposure or the brightness of our shot, there's a couple of ways that we can do it. We can either tap on the screen on the area that we want to expose for. As you can see, if we tap on the microphone here, it's brightened up the shot to make sure that that microphone is exposed correctly. If we tap on the white part of the desk down here, that's going to darken the shot off so that the whites aren't too bright. So for us, obviously the camera is gonna be the focus of this shot here. We're gonna tap on the camera somewhere or the microphone to brighten it up like that. Now, if we're happy with that brightness at that point, we can just press the E here and that will lock our exposure in at that point. So you can see now if I bring my hand in, there's no brightness adjustment taking place. It's locked in at that point. Now, if I unlock that for a second there now, now if we wanna dial this in further and make our shot brighter or darker, we can come up here to our exposure button here. Now in here, we're currently set to auto. So just leaving this on automatic adjustments, we can just use this exposure compensation slider. And as we lift it up, we're gonna brighten the shot as we darken it down or lower it down, we're gonna darken the shot down. So we can just make minor adjustments this way without getting caught up in all the settings. And you can see the yellow text in the top left-hand corner, it's making those automatic adjustments for us of ISO and shutter speed. Now for a lot of people, I would say that this is all you need to dive into. But if you're someone who wants that advanced control and wants to be able to lock everything down, then just at the top here where you've got the auto, the M50, 100, 200, if you actually press on those, then you can kick it into manual mode. So let's press on M to open up manual mode. And you can see here, we're now we're able to dial in our ISO and our shutter speed. So if there's a specific shutter speed that you wanna be shooting at, then you can dial that in here. 
Now typically your shutter speed is twice the frame rate. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, your shutter speed should be set to one over 60. So after we set the shutter speed, then we can use the ISO slider up and down to brighten or to darken our shot. Once you've got your exposure set where you want it, then press that little padlock again to lock your exposure at that point. So this tip for setting up and locking down your manual exposure, this is one of the tips that we feature in our free fast track video checklist that I'm gonna share with you at the end of this video. Now again, as we bring in my hand or anything here, we're not changing that exposure. Now you will see that the focus is still adjusting. If I tap on my hand here, we're adjusting the focus, but we're not adjusting the brightness or the exposure of the shot. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to lock down the white balance or the color temperature of the shot. So if we come up here to those three dots again, press on that and we come down here, we can see we've got our white balance preset. So we've got auto, manual, incandescent, fluorescent, daylight, cloudy. So you can see that this is actually changing up the colors or the color temperature that is captured by our device. So what I suggest you do here is to go through and find the one that matches the look and feel of the shot that you're after. So it could be daylight in our case, that looks pretty good. Or we could go to auto and let it do its automatic adjustment. And then when we're happy with it, then we can lock it so that it doesn't change, just pressing the W at the top here. And now our white balance is locked at that point. You definitely wanna lock this down so that your colors aren't changing as things change in your shot or in your scene. So now that you've got your exposure locked down, you've got your white balance locked down, the last thing to lock down is your focus so that that doesn't change throughout the length of your recording. So it can be as simple as bringing in whatever you wanna focus on, tapping on the screen to focus at that point, and then coming up here to these three dots again and hitting the padlock there for focus. Now focus is locked at that point. You see as I move it in and out, it's not changing. Now we can change up the focus mode if we go back to our three dots there. We've got automatic focus mode, in which case is gonna automatically focus and make adjustments for us. We've got infinity focus. We've got manual focus where we get the slider down the bottom here. And as I adjust this, it's moving in or out of focus. And wherever we let it go is where it's going to stay in focus. So if I let go there, our shot is in focus at that point and will stay there. And you've also got continuous autofocus here for video. So if I do bring my hand in, it's going to adjust to there, back to the camera, back to my hand, back to the camera. So depending on the type of videos you're making, you really wanna set that accordingly. But I would say for most people in most videos, what I would suggest is that you're locking down your focus. So if I bring my hand back in here now, you see my hands is in focus. We'll come up here and press the focus button to lock it at that point. Now our focus is locked. So if this was someone presenting to camera here, then there's no chance of this drifting in and out of focus while we're recording. So now that you've locked down your exposure, your white balance and your focus, it's a good idea to do a test recording. So with your microphones and everything plugged in, press record, record for 10, 15 seconds, make sure everything looks good, sounds good before you go and create your video. So you can save a heap of time just in case something wasn't as good or wasn't set correctly or set the way that you thought that it would be. So then all you need to do is just press this big record button here and your recording will start. So that's a complete step-by-step -step walkthrough using open camera on Android. Now, if you're someone who likes to have all the advanced controls and all the advanced features, then there is one other app that you should definitely consider and compare side by side to see which one is going to be the best option for you. And that's called Filmic Pro, and that's available for both iOS and Android. And yes, it does unlock slightly more functionality and control. Things like direct hardware integration with gimbal stabilizers and advanced lenses, but also advanced color control and log modes to really get the most out of your smartphones. So if you're someone that's after even that next level again of control and functionality, then you should definitely check out Filmic Pro. And I've got a link up in the cards to a review and walkthrough that we've done on Filmic Pro as well. Now at the start of this video, I did mention that I would share with you our fast track checklist to help you maximize results when you're filming on any smartphone, including links to all the simple gear that we recommend, a ton of simple tips that you can also use to implement right now to level up your smartphone game on any smartphone. There's a link to that guide that you can click and download right now on screen and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.